Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today's video where I'm going to be doing a review on this pretty pink watercolour travel palette by Paul Rubens. I ordered this palette a few weeks ago from Amazon with a view to taking it on holiday with me next week and have been desperate to open it up and test it out before I go. So that's what I'm doing today and I hope you enjoy the video. So this is the smallest set of Paul Rubens watercolours and contains 12 professional watercolour paints in pans. And wow, this packaging is beautiful. Inside the outer box, the palette comes wrapped in a soft pink cloth to protect it from scratches. And this attention to detail immediately gives you a sense that you are about to open something special. This baby pink coloured metal tin comes with a metal clip underneath so you can easily hold onto your palette whilst painting outside or on the go and it fits nicely into your hand measuring a neat 12 by 7 centimetres. Inside you'll find a product information leaflet showing you all the colours available in the range. However being that this product is made in China it is in Chinese. There is also a small swatch card again in Chinese but the pigment numbers are in English. So far as mixing surfaces go, as you can see, the tray containing the paint pans does lift out to reveal more mixing space underneath, giving you plenty of options for such a small palette. The paints themselves are removable, so you do have the option to change, rearrange or replace individual pans, but they also fit quite securely into the palette as well, so they won't fall out or rattle around during travel. And unlike other watercolour sets I've tried, these Paul Rubens paints aren't individually wrapped in plastic, which is a relief as it will save time on unwrapping and is kinder to the environment. Instead, they come with a sticky label on them which you can simply peel off and keep for reference. Each of the 12 pans is well filled and has a nice bright appearance when dry. So how do they perform? Well, I start by spritzing them with water and give them a few minutes to activate before swatching them out on the card provided. The first colour in this set is Permanent Lemon Yellow and for each of the colours I'm going to show you how they lay down first and once I've finished the swatching I'm going to be filling in a more detailed chart I've made and go through all the information on pigments, light fastness and all that good stuff which I can then keep as a reference in my colour swatch folder. The second colour is Cadmium Yellow Medium and straight away with both these colours I felt like they were super creamy, reactivated well and laid down very smoothly on the paper. Next is Cadmium Red Light which is more of a rich orange but again super rich, creamy and really vibrant. For each of the colours I've also tried to show the range from really concentrated to more diluted just by adding more water. Now I'm swatching Rose Red and whilst it's not quite as magenta as I'd wanted it to be, it's still a really beautiful colour. So moving on and now we have Permanent Violet and this one is super dark in the palette and very pigmented but for me I think it's a really useful colour to have for shadows in landscapes or even to add to skin tones when painting portraits. French Ultramarine is next and this one goes down really smoothly for a colour that is typically more granulating. I'm not a huge fan of granulating colours so this is fine by me. The next colour is called Payne's Grey but is a very blue grey which resembles more of an indigo. Now for the only green in this palette which is called Emerald Green Deep but it looks exactly like my Viridian. Yellow ochre is next and this is another colour I'm really pleased to see as I use it quite a lot in my watercolour painting. The first of the two browns in this palette is umber and this I had to work a bit harder to lay down and seemed a bit streaky but the burnt brown on the other hand which was the second brown seemed really nice again. So the final colour in this set is coal black, which is not a colour I would choose to have in a set this size, but it did seem really rich, dark and smooth. So here they all are together. They are bright, vibrant colours with high saturation and they do lay down really smoothly. But let's look a bit more closely at some of the other properties. 
and you can see what I've done here is I've laid out all of those stickers from the pigments onto the left hand side of this chart. I'm going to write down all of the pigments that are in these paints and then go through and look at the transparency as well as the light fastness and I'm also going to look at things like the flow and granulation as well. All the information about the pigments used in these watercolours is actually in tiny writing in English on the leaflet as well as the stickers on the individual pans. All the other information I found is either from Amazon or testing it out for myself. So if you have any further information on the properties of these paints, please let me know in the comments box below. So I'm going to start off with the two yellows in this set, the permanent lemon yellow which has the pigment PY3 in it and the cadmium yellow medium which has the pigment PY35 in it. Now the light fast rating of these paints are based on a scale of 1 to 8, 8 being the highest which is absolutely light fast and lower numbers being less so. So as you'll see most of these paints are considered really highly light fast and that's a good thing especially if you're taking your paints out and about or traveling in sunny outdoor climates. These paints are also described as having ultra pure pigments and claim not to have much color shift when dry and so are long lasting. So far as transparency is concerned, these paints do claim to have a good transparency and I've marked this information on my chart using a square. All the information for this I have taken from Amazon, so the open square is classed as transparent, the coloured in square as opaque and then the ones that I've coloured in half the square, they are either half transparent or half opaque. I've drawn a black line down my chart so that when I paint over it I can see the transparency for myself, but it does look like 7 out of the 12 colours are classed as being completely transparent, which is really good. And I like that 10 out of the 12 colours are single pigment colours, so for the most part they do live up to the claim of being ultra pure pigments. This also means that mixing colours should be easier with less chance of the colours muddying up which is important in a smaller set of paints where you are more likely to need to combine colours to get new ones. The next thing I wanted to look at with these watercolours is the staining and lifting ability as well as the way the paint flows. Paul Rubens uses gum arabic as a binder in their professional grade watercolours but I don't think they use oxcool which is usually added to watercolours to help them flow. And that's why for each colour I'm dropping a few drops of each paint onto the wet paper to see how it reacts. And I'll see how easy it is to lift the individual colours once the paint has dried. As I move down the chart you can see there is a fair bit of variation which could be to do with the pigment particles themselves. But it's worth getting to know how each colour reacts to water so you can know what to expect in your paintings. Now to test how easy it is to lift the paint once they've dried. So for this I've just added clean water onto my brush and went in afterwards with a paper towel. I found that most of the colours lifted pretty well but out of the 12 colours I thought the rose red and the permanent violet seemed to be more staining and didn't lift quite as easily. So finally I wanted to record any granulating paints as this can make a difference to which colour I choose and for which subject. However I couldn't actually find any official information on this so I went on my own observations. As I mentioned earlier even the French ultramarine went down super smoothly with only very minimal granulation but as for the others I didn't think any of them were granulating either. I've marked this in pencil on my chart for now, so should any official information become available, I can change or update it. On the whole though, I really like the quality of these watercolours and the colour choices seemed fairly well balanced, but I was disappointed with the umber as it seemed almost streaky and had a poor colour payoff compared with the others in the set. This palette was very reasonably priced though for a professional quality paint. I paid £22.99 on Amazon, which is at least half the price of other professional sets of this size. 
I did wonder about adding more pans to this set as well, but unfortunately these pans are too big to fit more in as they're more square than your average half pan. So what I ended up doing was customising my palette a bit. I swapped out the black and the umber and decided to add in their place another green and a burnt sienna. For the green I chose my Windsor and Newton Hooker's Green and my Windsor and Newton Burnt Sienna for the brown. I thought the lighter green would be really useful for landscapes and I really like mixing Burnt Sienna with Ultramarine to create a really nice grey or shadow colour. And as much as the larger Paul Rubens pans didn't fit into that little gap in between the two rows, I did think that I'd try in one of my Schminky Horodan pans which are slightly smaller. This Cobalt Turquoise was also a colour that I'd wanted to add to my palette for painting seascapes so I was really pleased to be able to add that in as well. So with my new customised palette more suited to my individual needs and preferences complete, I made a new swatch card and covered it in sticky back plastic to protect it from getting wet. And I'm really excited to use this watercolour palette. It's pocket sized, compact and lightweight so it's really convenient for travel or even as a first watercolour palette for someone who's new to watercolour and wants to try it out. It's beautifully presented and packaged and I do love the pink tin, which is easy to clean and claims not to leak either, but I would always suggest you wait for your paints to dry first. It has also got great reviews on Amazon with a 4.7 out of 5 rating, but let me know in the comments if you've tried the Paul Rubens watercolours before and what you think of them. I hope you liked the video today and found it useful, if you did please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon as well to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Have a great week, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.